Right now, we're standing inside the East Martello, and Ford East Martello is very much a part of Key West history. Back in the days of the Civil War, the ultimate fort, the impregnable fort, was a Martello. And it was a kind of a fort that was built that could withstand enemy artillery. They began this fort with a central citadel, which is the big central structure with the walls that are eight feet thick. They then started the building of the outer ring, which is where we're standing right now. Unfortunately, people got better at inventing bigger guns and stronger missiles. Even these thick walls couldn't withstand it. This is the last Martello fort. And this East Martello is really important to us in Key West because it's been here through so much of our history. It's a fort that never fired a cannon. It's a fort where a soldier never died in battle, and yet it was always part of our history. And as you enter and you begin to walk through the casements, you find the story of Key West unfolding in front of you. We go all the way back to the first Native Americans who were here. The Spanish referred to it as Cayo Hueso, meaning the island of bones, and the bones were probably Indian graves. So. The first part of this is about the Indians who were here. After the Indians, you meet the first settlers in Key West, and you learn about what was the major business, which was salvage of shipwrecks. Wrecking business became one of the most profitable industries down here. In fact, it was so profitable that Key West soon was a bustling economy, one of the largest places in Florida. Later, other industries came about, the cigar business. The cigar business made Key West the richest city per capita in the United States. And they were rolling at one time millions of cigars. At the same time, the sponging business, which was another very profitable business in Key West, was decimated by a blight in the sponge beds. And really by the 1930s, Key West had become the poorest city in the United States. In addition to the history exhibits here, we also have some wonderful artists whose work is always on display. Mario Sanchez was a wonderful artist, and his woodcuts, his paintings, really are documents of what this town looked like in the beginning of the 20th century. Mario's wonderful folk art is always on display. We also have the sculptures of Stanley Papio. Papio is a real favorite because he would put together things that had been rejected like car bumpers or washing machine parts and create these whimsical sculptures. And they are scattered throughout East Martello. And we invite people to come and take a look at those and then just enjoy some of the art that we've preserved here. We've recently opened a new exhibit called The Ghosts of East Martello because much of our history is really told to us by people who aren't here anymore. Their stories are left to us as oral histories of what it was like in the past. Now, some of our ghosts do have names. Robert is over 100 years old, and he was made for Eugene Otto. And when the little boy was growing up, if anything bad happened, he would say to his parents, Robert did it. Robert's a very favorite character out here. People write him letters. He's responsible for a lot of strange goings on. There's also the strange tale of Elena and the Count. And I'll leave that one up to your imagination. You need to come and hear that story here. We really hope people will come and visit East Martello. It's not downtown. It's not one of those major tourist traps that you see so often from the water. It's a respectable Civil War fort that happens to have a lot of ghosts and interesting things happening. So as you drive down US-1 and you find the Key West Airport, take a look at that Civil War fort that stands right next to it and learn a little bit about our history.